Well, last week was a beautiful spring day for an adventure just like this one. And then we paid for it with three days of off and on snow. But as you can see, that is all gone now and we are back to the spring vibe here in Egan, Minnesota at Capone Art Park. As I give you the 360 of where I am standing right now, and those are the trails that we are about to check out. Well, hello there, and welcome to another beautiful day for an adventure. We are at Capone Art Park in Egan, Minnesota today, and we are gonna go on a hiking trail. This is a 60-acre park. They've got art installations along the way, from what I understand. They've got like a little band shell area where there are performances during the summer. There's all sorts of activities going on here when it is open and today is the very first opening day of the year. And so I'm happy to take a look around. I've never been here before so as usual we are going to learn about this place together. If you are brand new to this channel go ahead and hit subscribe so you don't miss out on a thing. Welcome to another edition of Tommy Travels. It's Tommy Travels. Come on with me you guys. Let's go see what there is to see. And so welcome to Capone Art Park. Here is a map of all 60 acres. And I don't think we're gonna be walking all of these trails today. We are currently right here. We're gonna meander this way and over this way a little bit and over to the sculpture garden and see what they have over there. Way over here on this other side, there's the theater in the park that I mentioned. We're not going to be going over there today because there isn't much going on over there right now in this day and age. So we're just going to stick right over here to the sculpture garden and see what kind of stuff they have to see. And check this out. This is the first time I've actually seen one of these in person. It's a little free library where you can just open the door and find a book that suits your liking. Or maybe put another one in it that you've already read for someone else to enjoy or bring it back. Whatever you want to do, but it's a little free library. Love that organization. And away we go. Look at this, just a beautiful day for a walk to take in some nice wooded scenery. And a very nice little trail. What an amazing little area this is with some beautiful homes, this wooded area, with a little creek back there. When I was a kid, we had a wooded area with a creek in our neighborhood, and we used to spend hours playing down there. That's what kind of that area kind of reminds me of. Brings back the old childhood memories. And so now we have reached the windy path of the sculpture garden itself. Winds all the way up that hill, and we're gonna have a lot to check out today, I think. And this first piece has a placard, but there's nothing written on it. So we have no idea exactly what, what we're dealing with here. <laughs> it's definitely made out of cement, but I'm not sure exactly what it, what it is or what it represents. And I have a feeling we're gonna be in for a lot of this today with the type of art installations I'm seeing kind of around where we have to use our imagination. <laughs> so, this is piece number one. Let's see what else we have in store for us today. Now we're talking. Look at this. <laughs> now that is some sculpture right there. It doesn't say exactly what it is, but I have a feeling it is the Minnesota State Bird we're looking at right there. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, it's the mosquito. <laughs> at least that's what I think it is. And look at that eye right there. All the metal. That is, that is very well done. Well, on second thought, maybe it's not a mosquito. 
<laughs> but whatever it is, it is cool. Maybe it's a star of some sort. <laughs> I just don't know. This is some creative landscaping they have here. Look at this rock retaining wall with the circles of moss in the middle, which is probably a lot greener a little later in the year. It takes us up to a walking path. And, oh my, <laughs> a snake. Look at the size of this snake. Holy cow, that winds all the way up the path. You gotta watch out. <laughs> the snake is gonna get you. I just love how whimsical of an idea that is and the amount of detail that went into it. If you look closely, you can see different colored stones are involved, different shapes cut out. I mean, this wasn't something that was just slapped together. This is an intricately detailed piece of art. Wow. So far, I think this is my favorite. What we're looking at here is a house that was built in 1950 by Anthony Capone. He is the artist that is responsible for this entire park. He was born in Italy and at the young age of 15 he decided that the town he was living in was a little too small so he crossed the pond all by himself and came to America. He served in World War II and then when he came out he went to Walker Art Center where there was some classes that he was taking and then he transferred over to the University of Minnesota got a master's degree and then started teaching art at McAllister College. He was the head of the art program. He was also a commissioned artist that has pieces all over the state of Minnesota and became quite famous. He was building art at such a fast rate of speed that he didn't know where he was going to store it all but he had this giant 60 acre backyard and he decided to make it one giant art piece for the public to adore on beautiful, wonderful days. And so that is what we are going to be doing today. <laughs> this is amazing. And the entrance to the home is closed, but I was drawn in by this attraction right here. This little art piece is a collection of old army helmets. I couldn't tell that at first. I was like, what is that? I'm wondering if this is kind of a tribute to his days in World War II. And that brings us to this guy right here. I'm not sure what this is either. Looks like a cross between like a spider and a cyclops or something. I feel like those are eyes on the top, if I had to guess, which gives them a good view of the street, but also probably the best view of the overall grounds around here. Very well positioned to keep an eye on everything going on. And it seems like every adventure I go on lately, look, <laughs> remnants of leftover snow. It is 60 degrees outside right now. <laughs> and still, snow exists here in Minnesota. This is what I call the stubborn stuff. It just won't go away. I just love how they have beauty hidden all over the hillside here, like this little birdie right here, and then you just look up and <laughs> look at this amazing piece glimmering in the sunshine. It's kind of cool how these pieces just kind of blend in with the trail and the nature and the walkway. They're not real obtrusive, it's just kind of a little something to see along the way. And look at this little guy that we have here. Looks like a little prehistoric pet, like on the Flintstones or something. <laughs> it really does. Looks like a little baby dinosaur of some sort. <laughs> Looking around for a snack in the morning. Hello, little guy. Good to meet you. I kind of alluded to this earlier, but one of the things that Anthony Capone says is that he wants people to see the hillside first, and then just kind of notice the artwork as it cooperates with humankind and nature. And look at this lovely piece right here. And one thing about Anthony Capone too is that he never knew exactly where he was going or what he was going to create out of the medium that he started off with. He just put it up, checked out the space around it, started working on it, and then winds up with beautiful pieces like this. 
And here is a piece that Anthony Capone made back in 1971. This is made out of red granite and it's called Cornerstone. And this backside is reminiscent of our caveman past. But if you move over to the front, it tells the story of how we've evolved as humans and in culture and in society. There's E equals MC squared, a tribute to Einstein, some musical notes of Beethoven's Fifth Symphony. It just kind of encapsulates humankind in one amazing work of art. <laughs> I'm so glad I came out here today. Well, just take a look at this. I think I found my new favorite piece. <laughs> there isn't a placard that tells exactly what this is, but I'm getting a very big frog vibe. <laughs> look at those froggy eyes and the froggy legs. <laughs> <laughs> what a wonderful, whimsical, amazing piece. Look at that. Hello, fella. Nice to meet you. Wow, this is just an absolutely gorgeous view today. And look at this piece. <laughs> I'm sure this wasn't his intention, but <laughs> this kind of reminds me of those footballs we used to play with when we were a kid, you know, that had the football and then it had the tail on the end to help so that you could throw it 50 yards down the field, no problem, and it would soar in the air. <laughs> Again, I'm sure that's not what this is, but that's what it reminds me of. And I'm sure that would make him smile. This is probably one of my favorite things about the park here. Art just comes up out of nowhere. Look at that, rock, 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 art. <laughs> Look at that little guy. Rock, rock, rock. Art. And not just not just goofy art. This looks like a, a mother coddling a child right here. Very tender moment being captured just on a rock. Rock, 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 rocks, rock. Art. <laughs> it's awesome. Look at this. Rock, rock, rock. You're just walking along the way. Rock, 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 rock. And look at this tender moment right here. A couple in love. This is just beautiful place everywhere you look. Look at that. Trees, trees, wood themed, wood themed. And oh, <laughs> I don't know what's going on there. I'll give you some privacy. Back to the trees. <laughs> and there's another look at the home from the backyard view. And by the way, how would you like to have this as your backyard? With views like this. How amazing would that be? Just one cool art installation after another. And now we have come to the final piece of the day. This one right here. It's one of the best for last, I think. It appears to be some type of a bird sitting in some type of a nest. It also has a kind of a uh, dinosaur feel to it. Baby dinosaur at that, because if you see this one over here to the right, it looks like it's waiting to be fed by mom. So I think these are the two kids just waiting patiently for some lunch. And that is a good way to end this awesome episode of Tommy Travels as we look at this wonderful landscaping as well. This beautiful rock structure. Look at that. The level of detail that goes into this place all around you is just absolutely unbelievable. If you're in the Minnesota Egan area, which is where this place is in Egan, you should definitely check this place out. Put it on your list because it is absolutely incredible. I'm sure that there are some other structures that I've missed around here, but I think I will be coming back for sure because I believe there's a museum attached to this as well, which is currently closed. So if you guys liked this episode of Tommy Travels, make sure you go ahead and hit like, and also hit the subscribe button and the little bell notification next to it so you can be the first to know when a new adventure comes out. And thank you guys so much for the support that you have given me so far. And until next time, I hope to catch you on the flip side.